diversified oil group Sassel continued to be hit hard by the dropping oil price. It turned a two-day losing streak around by closing higher yesterday. Uh, but around midday, Sassel shares stood at 390 rand a share, down 3% from this morning. Analysts are hesitating to recommend it as an immediate buy as uncertainty clouds its prospects. Sassol is one of the energy companies affected by the falling oil price. Its revenue is linked to the dollar price of oil. The fuel producer shares have tanked by 38% since September last year. This is putting risk at its spending plans. Sassol finalized plans last month to build an 8.9 billion US dollar plant in the US. The plant would convert natural gas into plastics and other chemicals. But the lowering of the oil price and a decline in the rand presents more problems for Sassol. Locally, one analyst sees Sassel's declining share price having negative implications on certain pension fund valuations. In some pension funds and some general equity investments out there, Sassel makes up to 10% or even 12% in some instances of those funds are portfolios. So what that means is that that 12% of the portfolio that you were invested in, whether it's a pension fund or a general equity fund, it means it has lost value by 50%. Uh, due to, or rather, or rather between 35 and 50 percent due to the fall in the price of Sasol. And with losses of more than 200 billion rands in market capitalization, he says the gap between costs and profit is narrowing. To put it into context, last year we lost African Bank, which at the top it was a 20 billion uh, rand business. So what it means in essence is that Sasol having lost anything between 150 and 200 billion in value, we've essentially lost 20 African banks. 10 African banks rather, and no one is talking. However, others say there is hope of the company bouncing back. Sassol's misfortune could present a perfect time to buy shares at the current price, but analysts in general remain skeptical about any improvement soon as global oil prices are not expected to rise strongly over the short term. Diabo Seto, SABC News, Johannesburg. Well, Sasha Narishkin from Vestex joins me now to talk about the effects of the dropping oil price on some companies. Sasha, good afternoon. Good afternoon, David. All right, so the effects are widespread. I mean, both positive and negative effects of this dropping oil price. But let's stick with Sasha for a mm. while because of its proximity. Some concerning warnings in the previous piece here. What's your take? Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of heading towards a 24-month low yeah. um, of around 360, 365. But to put it into context, you know, this is a company that had operating profits of over 65 billion rand last year, you know, and they were able to pay out, I think somewhere in the region of 12.9 billion rands to their shareholders by way of dividend. This is a company that's extremely cash generative and it's Sin Fuels business. So that's the one where they convert coal and gas into liquid petroleum. Mm -hmm. That has margins, operating margins of about 50%. So they've got absolutely no gearings. They've got no debt uh, whatsoever. So I, I wouldn't get too concerned other than the fact that we have seen this before. You know, there was a big shock with the oil price having come off sharply, at much sharper than where we are here now. If you remember in the middle of 2008, That's the right. oil price nearly reached $150 a barrel. Now in the washout, um, in the financial crisis, we got to close to 30. So, in fact, Sassel's seen much harder times, uh, and of obviously demand would have dropped too as global consumers. Now, we've got in the developing world, demand continuing to rise, but in the developed world, because of efficiencies, yep. both in motor vehicles and in heating, uh, demand is tapering off. All right, so, so this concern about some fund managers having. Sassel as 10 to 12 percent of their portfolios. You're suggesting because of the diversification, it's not a big thing to worry about. Well, in fact, the business is aiming to be more diversified by spending, you know, over eight billion dollars uh, in the U.S. And that's just initially. You know, there could be a second leg, a gas to liquids plant. Now, remember that if their feedstock, their input is gas, and that's at a lower price, that means their margins will be better on the chemical side. So I think um, the critical thing to watch here, yep. obviously for those pension funds, is the dividend. Because as they've always maintained, they've got dividend cover of between 2.2 to 2.3 times. So essentially what that means is they'll pay um, you know, about 40% of all their earnings by way of dividend to their shareholders. So you, you could anticipate a slight drop in the dividend 
or they might maintain it because they've been quite prudent because investors know that they're going to be building this massive plant in Lake Charles in Louisiana. I want to talk about that plant. I mean, what is it? $9 billion of an investment, ethane cracker and derivatives complex. How do you finance that? And, and does the latest chain of events have any impact? Well, because they've got no debt, yeah. it's easier for them to be able to raise money in the overseas. And because remembering that, um, you know, the cost of that debt is much lower than probably at any point in Sassel's history, even if they pay up for it with heightened uncertainties, it's going to be cheaper. So the timelines here and the time horizon is three to four years. So if you're an investor in Sassel and you're willing to be patient and you say, I think they can execute, because what's important here is that is there enough feedstock in North America yep. for them to be able to have ongoing. So I think they're going to take up less than 1% of all North American gas, natural gas, but that's still quite a big number, relatively speaking. But then they'll be able to on-sell into the chemicals market. Now, if that's successful, then they have the ability to be able to ramp up and have a gas-to-liquids plant not too dissimilar to Sasselberg and, of course, uh, in Qatar. All right, let's just talk about just general economic implications now. All exporting countries being hit hard. We see what's happening in Angola, in Nigeria. Uh, just bringing it back to South Africa, uh, this sort of scenario does well for a current account deficit, doesn't it? It means we're buying at a cheaper price. Yes. Of course, obviously the rand is weakened too, but by not as much as the, the, the oil price is weakened. So it's got a positive spin for... I mean, you would have noticed that the petrol price is cheaper as of yesterday, and there's probably some more coming in the coming months. So provided the economic outlook is a little bit less clouded and consumers are better, it's almost like a tax break for all consumers. So whilst you might not see immediately prices of food falling, you are seeing what you're paying at the pump falling. So there's, it's like a stimulatory effect. And if you're buying more um, rather than servicing debt, for instance, those are two positives for consumers. Well, let me pick your brain on one last thing. Just looking at the space being provided here uh, with the price we're paying for fuel, can we not sneak in yes. some sort of a levy <laughs> and we get the fracas over ETOLs out of the way? Is that possible? Yeah, I would think this is a, probably a brilliantly opportune time in order to be able to shunt that through because consumers probably wouldn't notice too much having seen a precipitous fall in what they're paying for petrol. So if next month it were to remain even and there's an over-collection of 25 to 30 cents now, probably perfect timing. Or who knows, the budget speech is just around the corner. Uh, maybe Minister Nene would um, be you know, inclined to be able to slip that in. We'll keep our eyes on it. Sasha Nereshkin from Vestac. Thanks indeed for Thanks, your time. Thanks, Devon. Now we'll take a look at some international business news when we come back.